So this is a wonderful occasion for Stony Brook and uh, for me personally because uh, my office is right up there and I've watched all of it from the initial excavation to the final patentation uh, every single step. Uh, it's been an incredible project as you can imagine looking at the, the final result. I just want to tell you briefly that the roots of this project go back to 1989 when uh, Pamela, speak up, <laughs> when Pamela Davis Kimmelson was here and we taught a math art course and uh, we invited all the prominent mathematical artists in the country to come and uh, give us talks and show their work. So Helaman came and uh, he was walking around campus and we couldn't help spot these places which just looked like they needed a sculpture. And in fact, this was one of the places. This, that was 1989, and then we fast forward to, uh, hey, here you go. Hey. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> I feel there's a magic spot here. We fast forward to uh, 2009, 2010, and this wonderful project uh, comes into uh, conception and finally execution. And uh, I have to say that Jim and Hilleman are both old good friends of mine, but they cooked up a lot of this together. For example, if you look at the the actual spot of the uh, where the sculpture ended up being was chosen by Jim, and the orientation of the sculpture was done by Fiat, by Jim. They said, do you want it this way? Do you want it this way? He said, put it that way. And there it is. OK. So the first person uh, whom I want to introduce is our president, Dr. Sam Stanley. So I'll try and speak out as loud as I can. So a little less than a year ago, uh, we gathered to announce a transformational gift from Marilyn and Jim Simons and the Simons Foundation. That $150 million gift has allowed us to invest in excellence across both campuses. It is helping to fund research, professorships, and recruit top-level graduate and undergraduate students. And more than anything else, that gift has inspired people, inspired people to give to Stony Brook University across Long Island and across the country. <laughs> Today we're all gathered to thank Marilyn and Jim for their gift of the Umbilic Taurus, which similar to their $150 million gift has raised sights, awareness, and expectations on our campus. I know that this beautiful, nearly 10-ton magnum opus, created by the extraordinarily talented Helaman Ferguson, will serve to inspire our students and our faculty. And knowing that it takes a small village to create a work of this magnitude, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the contributions of artist and writer Claire Ferguson, who will be lecturing with Helaman about the sculpture later. The crew of over two dozen artists, engineers, programmers, and welders who labeled for two years. Patty Weisenfeld and many others from the Simons Foundation who worked to make this a reality, as well as Elise Winters, Barbara Chernow, and Dexter Bailey and their teams at the university. Sitting where it does, on one side providing an elegant gateway to the nearby Simon Center for Geometry and Physics, and from the other direction, framing an entrance to the academic mall. This remarkable sculpture emphasizes the important relationship between math, science, art, and the humanities. Albert Einstein once wrote, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of true art and all science. So the unknown, the mysterious, is where art and science meet. Marilyn and Jim, thank you for bringing both art and science to this campus, and for all the many ways your generosity continues to inspire each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Stanley. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Jim and Marilyn. So I told Tony to shout, so I'll shout too. This is great. When we selected it, we looked at various things that Hellman had done. And of all of them, this seemed the simplest, the most elegant, and 
appropriate for this setting. So we picked this. But I never expected it to be as wonderful as it's turned out to be. I thought it would be beautiful, but I just couldn't appreciate how wonderful it really is. And I think that knowing all of the work that Hellman and his wife and his team put into this, I can see how it came out as wonderful as it did. This was a work, an incredible work. Uh, to begin with, Hellman had to build a robot to do the, the, uh, the carving of the molds because they were too big and complicated to be done by hand, etc. Every step of the way presented new challenges that Patty Weisenfeld dutifully reported to me on her trips down there. And she'd come back and say, well, there's another problem, but I think Hellman has it under control somehow. And uh, any project that's going to come out like this, you can imagine, has plenty of problems along the way. But uh, so I'm just grateful to the team that built this for the wonderful job that they did. And I, and I think it will be great for everybody. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> Marilyn, you want to? Well, I, in this case, I wasn't really involved in this project. So I don't really feel like I'm standing up here for good reason when so many other people have contributed to this. But I would just say on a personal note that aside from Stony Brook meaning so much to me for the years I spent here, this part of campus was a destination spot for me because the last few years of my undergraduate and my uh, beginning of my graduate education, I'd come over here at the end of the day to meet Chip. So, um, if this was Strictly always... professional. <laughs> <laughs> so, this part of campus was a destination spot for me, and I think this uh, wonderful, wonderful sculpture here will maybe make it a destination area for many more people on the campus. So, um, we, I heard that there's a wonderful picture of students sitting around it and I hope over the years to come that everybody gets to enjoy this this part of them as much as I have. <laughs> Thank you Jim and Marilyn. Next on the uh, agenda is uh, the sculptor himself, Gilliman Ferguson and Claire Ferguson the uh, critic and uh, accomplice in his uh, wonderful work. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. It's done. <laughs> Claire and I will be giving a short illustrated talk, so you're welcome to come to that uh, in a few minutes. I would like at this point to thank Jim and Marilyn specifically for having the vision to initiate this project. As Jim said, to me, he didn't think either one of us really knew what we were getting into. <laughs> well, I knew, but uh, it's not something I necessarily even revealed to myself in the course of the project. But it's accomplished. There's a lot to be said about it, and that is my word. It's a three-dimensional word. So I will leave it at that. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> oh dear. Thank you to this wonderful university, Jim and Marilyn, and 
um, President Stanley. I really have never seen Hillman so happy in his whole <laughs> life as doing this great big project. It involved hours and hours, but he loved every minute of it. And it's a wonderful tribute to science and mathematics. Thank you. I just wanted to say, in the course of my sculpture, I celebrate mathematics, which is also the queen of the sciences in some people's minds. And so it's a great pleasure to bring this here, 55 tons of 2 billion year old granite and 20,000 pounds of silicon bronze and I expected and I chose the materials to be here for the next 10,000 years. Now, you're here on the North Shore and all, but many generations of faculty, students, and the surrounding area can enjoy this piece. The thought of that brings all of us great pleasure. Thank you very much. One last person I'd like to invite to the podium, and that's uh, Patty Wiesenfeld from the Simons Foundation. I'm just shouting that I'm going to thank everyone on the stage for their contributions and give out some flowers. That's for you. And now, hang on, we're going to have a subraj performed by Chef Paolo. Oh. Oh.